Welcome to another segment with Dave and myself, and today we are going to show you how to remove nano from the food. Nano, nano, baby, we're going to take it out, all the way out. Okay, I've been telling you guys, don't eat the broad green leafy vegetables because they are loaded with nano. Now, some of you are saying, Tone, you're full of... And what are we supposed to eat? We can't eat this, so we can't eat that. Well, it's becoming limited because that's the nature of how they are poisoning humanity. I am not the one that's your enemy. I am the one pointing out how they are killing you. And if you still don't know what nanotechnology is all about, again, go to my website, augmentenforce.com. Look at the glyphosate link. That you should really pay attention to. Excuse me. I look at the nano link. And I'm also doing a Podomatic. Independence.podomatic.com. I'm constantly doing shows every week. Uh, this week I've done three shows. I'll be doing another show Monday. Uh, one radio network with uh, Texas with Patrick Timponi. That also gets that gets to be a real wild time sometimes with him and I. And it's a good. It's good. It's all good. Really, it really is. Uh, he uh, sometimes gets provocative, and he, we get into some disputes and arguments, which is really cool because there's two Mediterraneans having a discussion, and this is how Mediterraneans act. <laughs> and there's never any hard feelings. Just so so any of you just in the show and you, and you hear some kind of a dissension or disagreement. Please do not take it out on him or myself. It's just the nature of the beast. That's all it is. I don't have any ill will toward Patrick Timponi. I actually am grateful that he's allowed me to go on the show and to rant and rave like a madman sometimes. But anyway, um, again, go to independence.podomatic.com. That is going to be an eye-opener because I'm going to keep you current on nano, nano poisoning and how you with the more gallons do not have the so-called ooky woo mold and what's the other one? Goo and all this other bullshit that you're being told. You don't have lime, you don't have mold, you do have nano poisoning. You do have synthetic biology coursing through your body trying to rewrite your DNA. You have a biological agent attached to a technological agent that's creating the havoc in your body. Do not use spookies, do not use rice, do not use zappers, do not use anything that's going to charge your body. Now, you can remove this stuff through by giving yourself some sort of a pulse, an EMP pulse, but that's only 30% of the equation. You still have to strip it out through either a saline bath or some sort of solution, and you have to rebuild the genetic code. You have to repair the helix, the double helix. And there's several ways you can do this, but today we're not going to talk about that. Today we're going to talk about taking nano out of the food. We did an experiment earlier, me and Dave, just to show you. This was a red wine. Uh, uh, dealkalized drink from Germany that we tried to filter with a three-stage filtering process and the shit kept going through it. Now, how am I going to get that out? We're going to use oil. Now, as you can see here, there's clarity. As you can see on the top, there's oil. Now, if we tip the oil, what happens? The oil goes back and now we have clarity. What happens? The oil has collected the nano. Now we're going to show you how to do it. So if you're going to juice anything, and I don't give a shit what it is you juice, if you're going to juice berries, you should not consume any berries. Strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, loganberries, uh, gooseberries, Saskatoon berries, which are one of my favorites. Uh, don't consume them. But you can juice them. And then filter. And take the nano out. Okay, we're going to show you how to do it. This is that stuff from Germany. I'm not going to show you the label because I don't think it's fair to this company. They probably don't know what they're doing either. They have no idea about the nano. And again, pulling it out. So this is what you do. You're going to pour this. This has been fermenting for a while, so it's got a little carbonation going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Grape juice on a fermented style. Okay. <laughs> pour that in. Here it's going to play. Ooh, look at that. Carbonated. Because it's fermenting. All right, so you can see. Oh, nanu nanu. Take oil now. Use peanut oil. It's probably the cheapest oil you can use. Do not use canola oil for obvious reasons. Canola oil is not an oil you should use unless you're trying to lubricate metal. If you've got a rusty nail or rusty joints or hinges to squeak, canola oil is your man. Trust me, that's the oil you. Because that's what they use in the industry. Those big stamping presses used to come down. Kaboom, kaboom. But well, that's what they used to put on the, the uh, shaft so that the shaft wouldn't overheat and the oil would then penetrate into the shaft and then keep it lubricated. Well, this is what it does to you. It penetrates into your cells and breaks you down. Don't use it. Don't consume it. And don't put it in with your food. Not a good idea. All right. Then we're going to take a cap. We're going to take a cap. See, I can measure this. 
high tech stuff. Well, mm. I'm telling you, oh, this geez. is high tech. Okay, pour it in there. Dun, 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 dun. Should have put it on the scale. Uh huh. And then we could just see it getting heavy. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm going to borrow the blade again. I got that. <clears throat> Ugh. I don't care about the zinc or whatever was in here. Now you can see. Dun, dun, dun. Put that on there. Bubble, bubble, toy line trouble. Okay, here we go. Tighten it up good. It's probably going to leak a little bit because, again, it was leaking before. Put it in. Blend it for about a minute. Separate it. Let's see. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, she's a. She's about ready to explode. <laughs> okay, made a mess. Yeah, that seal on there wasn't that good. I gotta fix that one so she seals better. Okay, I don't wipe this out. We're gonna have a stain. Okay, now you take it out. And right now you can see there will be, uh, it has to settle, but you can see the oil will start to separate from the mixture. Okay? So let's sit for a minute. And if, if Dave can actually look down, you can see the oil starting to, to uh, separate. See it? The bubbles are forming. Mm -hmm. Now what we've done is we have created an agglomeration or an aggregation of particles into the fat. And again, one of the ways to get the nanoparticles out of the body is by consuming high levels of saturated fat, not omega-3. Omega-3s break down the myelin sheet, allowing for more nanoparticulates to get into the cells. All this bullshit about omega-3, we should never have gotten into that. It's another one of these things. And this, this fermented fish oil, holy jump it. Anybody who's got a half a brain could see right through that game. Fish oils... Fermented or otherwise, last I checked, there was no sugar. Sugar is what you use to ferment. So what they're selling in the market that they're calling fermented fish oil is rancid oil. And the reason why they're selling this rancid oil is because all the fish oils that have been tested in over 16 different countries, including Canada and the United States and most of Europe, are all rancid and you are consuming this with the with the thing about oh you're getting dha and we're getting blah, blah, blah. dha you can get from hazelnut oil and i would suggest you get it from the nut oils and the seed oils which are far better than that shit they're selling you in the health food store calling it fish oil all the fish oils have been proven to be rancid the united states and canada i think they tested like 18 different brands not one was fit for human consumption and they're all loaded with lead Cadmium and mercury, even the ones that are so-called mercury-free. And let me explain mercury-free. <laughs> mercury-free. See, there's a level of mercury which is highly toxic, and there's a level of mercury which is toxic. And then there's a level of mercury that is still toxic, but not as toxic as toxic. And then it's cumulative. <laughs> okay. Just so we get this, so people understand this. And what happens is then you buy the stuff thinking, oh, it's mercury-free, yeah. But they didn't tell you there's lead in it, they didn't tell you there was cadmium in it, they didn't tell you that the mercury's still there, and they didn't tell you that it was oxidized shit. You know, when they say it's a distilled fish oil, I used to always look at that. How is this <laughs> safe? Because you've heated the oil. See, fish oil, omega-3s can't take the temperature at 104 degrees, and that's anything above that, they're done. And if you're even close to that, it starts to oxidize it. So then you've got to put an antioxidant in order to sustain it, like BHT or central oil rosemary, uh, vitamin A, or some antioxidant that's going to keep it from further breaking down. None of that has that in there. And again, they're telling you that BHT will cause you cancer. Well, breathing today can cause you cancer. All the nanoparticles that you're breathing, this shit activating, hitting you daily, causing nano... Uh, your DNA to be broken down and all this shit, you know, you're breathing in, causing it to uh, uh, agglomerate in your cells, bypassing your, your body, translocating and then, and then building, because this activates this and this starts to grow in your body. That's science fiction. No, it's science reality today. Okay. Oh, look. Man, like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> you see the film of oil? Okay, 
You're going to tip it a little bit. Oh, look at that. Look at the separation coming. Ooh, like we knew what we're doing here. Okay. <laughs> so, how are we going to drink that? Well, you can do this several different ways. You can put a lid on it with a hose, turn it upside down, and have a, a clothespin pinch it. And what happens is the oil will go to the top and the liquid will be on the bottom. And then when you unpinch the hose, it'll drain out. And when you get to the oil, you repinch the hose. That's another way of doing it. We can do it the old-fashioned way, the old, you know, old-school method. We can pour it with our hands. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you got some kind of robot that can do it for you. I mean, <laughs> okay, I'm going to let that break down a little bit more. I'm just going to show you here because we've already done this, and this has already had a chance to really fully separate. You can see the same film here. Just so you're not, it's not a sleight of hand. You can do this yourself. We're going to do a validation on it. Okay, we separate it. It's been separated, so now you can see it's got a cleaner separation. Because it's had a chance to sit, so what we're going to do now is just pour it. See the oil goes, keeps going back. Oh, it's starting to get in there now. No, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Sure, we got to pour it back in there. Come up with a better solution there. Hold on. Yeah, let's see here. Let's see what I'm okay, there we go. Well, just keep pouring it out. Let it separate. Okay, yeah, there you got a clean product. Now, this is nano-free. Or 99% nano-free. Okay, this is what you got to do. This is what, if, so if you are a vegetarian or a vegan and, you're, and your dye is high vegetable, this is how you're going to have to do it these days. You cannot strip it out of the fiber. I'm sorry to tell you this, but if you think you can strip it out of the fiber, then you go get yourself a 60x ocular or a 100x ocular and you look at it. And don't give me this bullshit. But you can't see nanoparticles without an electron microscope. I'm going to explain to you the fallacy of this bullshit again. Nanoparticles between 1 and 50 nanometers will penetrate everything. Skin, hair, clothing, shoes, uh, wood, everything. At 1 to 50 nanometers, you, you're right. You cannot see it unless you have some kind of device that can penetrate the the... Raw, the solid material to give you a spectral analysis, but anything above 100 nanometers will uh, will accumulate, not penetrate, and it will stay on the surface. Now, if you're seeing something on the surface, then you know it's at least 100 nanometers or more. What you're not seeing is what's penetrated beneath the surface of the vegetation that you're consuming. Don't assume and listen to assholes who do not know what they're talking about in regard to nanotechnology. Somebody says, well, you're a little bit crazy about the nano. I want you, for those of you who think I'm crazy, that's cool. I like it when people call me crazy. Because then I say to you, here's the challenge. Prove me wrong. Start looking at 1960 ultra-fine particles, which today is referred to as nanoparticles. Look what was put into the atmosphere. How many of you have heard about that thunderstorm asthma? What a load of bullshit. Asthma my ass. What happened was an experiment was done. They fired one of these things in uh, Australia, hit a ground wave uh, uh, missions, and it caused a charge in the atmosphere. Four people died. 8,500 people got again sent to the hospital because now bacteria is now gone airborne and it's traveling through the air particles of, uh, through the nanoparticles and it's binding with condensation they're finding out now because the bacteria is now airborne that the condensation is binding to the proteins of the bacteria it can now rain and snow it can snow now in warmer temperatures so as a result what happened with these people is they got hit with a charge that they were breeding this bacterial nano mixture which is a basically a biofilm attached to metallic material it got charged and it took them out and also they couldn't breathe ah oh, surprise <laughs> we got a bacteria or a protein carrying metal and you put a charge to it <laughs> cardiac arrest hmm. round wave energy emissions network okay 300 megahertz it should be running at 10 or 12 Canada is nothing but a harp weapon Go look at cell, uh, cell tower map of Canada, and you will find that we are nothing but a weaponized country, from pillar to post, top to bottom. All right, let's continue this. Oh, that's looking better. Oh, look at that. So that's what you got to do. Have a little patience. 
Clean, clean, clean. Nano free. Nano free. That should be on the labels now. Is it nano free? <laughs> Is it nano free? Because the more nano you eat, you eat a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and guess what? You are nano loaded. Okay, let's try this one. Was that part of your fish fish oil uh, analogy with with mercury? Yeah. Was that you know that it's that the threshold to be mercury free it below falls below a certain threshold? But that's what it is. That's the standard today. That's right, but then eat. as you eat more of it, you're yeah. building up the. Yeah, you can't get rid of it. Okay, <clears throat> so you're eating the stuff. It's going into the brain. <laughs> 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 that kind of thing. And then, this is the other thing the health food industry promotes. They promote lithium. Lithium origin. That's not the same as the lithium carbonate. Blah, blah, blah. All that bullshit. Lithium is in the chemtrails. Now, how do I know this? Because NASA said that, uh, that lithium is in the chemtrails. And you can tell that lithium is in your sky because your sky will be red, red, red. It's not the sun setting and all that horse shit. That's lithium being released into the atmosphere so that you can be a docile sheep and kiss anybody's arse that tells you to kiss their arse because you'll pucker up and go because you've got lithium and mercury in the brain. <laughs> <laughs> but, even, but even NASA's labeled it as chemtrails yeah, or they it, said something else? Yeah, Did no, they use another word for it? No, they, well, they didn't call it chemtrails. Some gal contacted NASA and wanted to know what was that red stuff in the sky. And they said it was lithium. They were, oh, using, they were using the lithium to monitor the weather formations and patterns. Okay, really, lithium. And this is why some of you are just, you know, <laughs> crazy. So I understand when you guys contact me on the, on the YouTube, you know, between the fluoride, the lithium, the mercury, you know, and every other aluminum, and the aluminum, oh, that's another one, aluminum. Mm, that's one's a beauty, especially with the women. Aluminum to women is like kryptonite to Superman. That will bind to the receptor sites and trigger a estrogen response, which causes mutations. So now you wind up with cancers that you shouldn't be having, you know, in the whole reproductive system, whether it be breasts, down below, all points in between. So again, and then you say, I'm the crazy one. I'm not the one spraying this shit on you, and I'm not the one activating this shit in you. Keep that in mind. Oh my God, what are we going to do? Mm. <laughs> you know, watch the videos and learn. That's what you're going to do. Mm. All right, there you have it. There's the idea. You're gonna have to be, you know, gentle. Now you can come up with a filtration system. You can use. Uh, I mean, I was looking at. Um, I was in an automotive shop and I was looking at this filter they had. And again, I don't know if it would filter it all out, but to save time, you may want to run it through a filter where it will collect the oil. What you if know? you just, even if you have just a jar with a nozzle at the bottom where you can just pour it out from the well, bottom? Yeah, I mean, the longer you let it sit, you know, the longer you let the stuff sit. The more it's going to separate, and then again, if I mean, if I was if I was going to do this regularly, I would probably put a uh, a tube with a cork or something in the in the thing, flip it upside down, and pinch it so that it wouldn't leak, yeah. or have one of those things that you could buy for the uh, wine, uh, you know, that you you pour mm -hmm. that has a, um, a self sealing uh, insert inside, and once it separates all at the top, then all you do is just hit the hit the release mechanism and it just pours out. Right. All and the oil's can, at the top. All the oil's at the top. Right. That's how you can do it. Come up with better ideas. I'm you know, I'm only showing you one little aspect. Some of you are very are very uh, have a lot of ingenuity. You know, go with it. You know, don't and don't be shy and don't let uh, don't let nobody tell you what you can and cannot do. If someone tells you that you can't do something, tell them to take a long walk off a short dock. Or give them the Canadian two-word expression, F-R-O. You know, that's just, this is something that you can tell people. Just do it. Don't listen to anybody. I don't listen to nobody. I don't let anybody tell me what I can't do. If they can't do it, that's their problem. <laughs> keep, keep, you know, and that's how you got to look at it. All right. There you have it. Anti-nano. Explore and expand your horizons. This is how we're going to have to look at doing things today. All right. To the next segment. From Dave and myself to your house. <laughs>